Hey there, War Gamers. Justin the Arm Painter here from Death Ray Designs, and today we're going to be showing you guys how to paint hazard stripes on your chain swords. Now, this is a very simple effect that you can uh, use with your other miniatures and so forth in other areas, but we think it's going to look really good on your Space Marines. I prepared this particular piece by priming it gray ahead of time. All the extra details on here you'll have to do yourself uh, there at the end. I think you can handle that. You've got the, the teeth, the handle here that you'd have to paint black, do some silver bits. But the focus of the video today is going to be painting the hazard stripes on the blade. How to get a crisp transition there, how to get a nice effect. To prepare this miniature for the yellow colors we're going to be laying down later, we're going to start by spraying down some brown. Now, I generally like to use the Minotaur Muddy Brown paint, but today we're going to be using Reaper Dark Highlight, simply because I was out of Muddy Brown at this time. Now, it's important to note that we're laying down brown first, because yellow has a much better coverage over brown, and it looks really nice. Uh, the same philosophies that I talked about during our Metallics video apply here. When you're working with yellows and oranges and colors like that, a brown base coat is a really good start. It's worth noting that the Reaper Paint Dark Highlight is not pre-thinned for an airbrush, so we had to prepare that. And one of the things I like to do is to spray on the back of my glove first before I start spraying on a miniature. It's a good practice to, to start getting in the habit of doing. Now before we start spraying the brown here, we want to plan out where our highlights and shadows are going to be. So let's assume for a minute that the Space Marine is holding the chainsaw at this angle. So we're going to have the dark areas down here near the, the handle where he's going to be holding it. And we're going to have the light areas up towards the top. So when we're spraying this brown here, we're going to be focusing on those areas because this is where the yellow colors are going to be the darkest. Again, we're preparing the surface for essentially the gradients that we're going to get with the yellows, and this is going to be the shadow. We're going to flip this over, and we're going to do the same thing on the back here, again, focusing the intensity of the paint more at the bottom where the shadows would be, and trying to feather it out so we can prepare to lay down future colors so we can really get that nice transition from dark yellow to light yellow. With our brown color now dry, it's time to come in with our white. As you can see here, we're spraying on the back of our hand first to test. It's important to note that the areas we're focusing on here are the high points where we want the yellow that we're going to lay down later to be the most intense. This is where the light is going to be hitting this blade. We're creating that gradient, that transition from light to dark. And in this case, we're essentially laying down a pre-shade. If you're interested in seeing this done with a different paint or a different effect, make sure you check out our video where I show you guys how to paint a blue Space Marine hatch, where we focus on some of the basics for pre-shading. We're going to do the same types of transitions on the other sides as well. So we're going to aim right here, try and get a nice hot white spot. Again, this is where it's going to have a future layer of really bright yellow. And now we're going to rotate over, and we're going to very carefully, very slowly, apply a thin layer across the edge here at the top, being sure to leave some of that brown across the bottom edge as well. It's very important that you don't cover all that up because we, we laid that down so we can get a gradient. If you cover it, you're going to lose that effect and that transition later. With our transitions applied and now dry, the next step is to apply our yellow. For that, we're going to be using Minotaur Craven. And I really like this yellow because it's very translucent. It goes on very, very thin. And the pre-shading that we did, the gradient that we set up is going to show through very well. I thin a lot of my airbrush paints, but for this one, I don't feel that there's a need to. It's a very light, thin color. Now we're going to test this on the back of our glove here, and you can really see how translucent it is. It's a very, very thin paint. And once I'm satisfied with the, the color and the mix, we're going to begin applying a thin coat to our blade here. Now just like with everything else we do with airbrushing, just apply a thin coat, multiple coats if necessary, and don't overdo it. You don't want this to pool or to run. And as you can see as we're laying this down, we're going to have a nice, bright, vibrant yellow where the white was, and the dark brownish yellow where the brown was laid down earlier. This is very quick and very easy. Now that our initial layer of Craven has been applied and is now dry, we're going to be coming in for another pass, focusing on these high points on the edge here. For that, we're going to be using Craven mixed with some irradiated yellow, also from Badger. For this mix, I've mixed these two colors in a one-to-one -one ratio. And when we apply this, we're going to be focusing on those areas where the white was already at. And essentially, we're going to be pushing the depth here, the gradient, by applying an even lighter yellow onto the spots where it should be brighter. It's worth noting that both the irradiated yellow and Craven are very, very thin paints and you may not get the coverage you want on the first pass. So just be patient, apply it in thin layers and thin coats if necessary, and just don't go overboard. The last thing you want to do is to get impatient while airbrushing and just sling a whole bunch of paint at one time and mess up the stuff that you've already worked on. In this case, you can really see that bright edge really popping with that color we've laid down, and that's exactly what we're going for. With this transition down, you can really see where the shadow is, uh, based on the, the way the space room might be holding it and where the light would be hitting the blade from the top. Looks like he's ready to vroom vroom, bring some, uh, some purging and some death to some heretics. 
So while we allow our blade to dry here, we're going to go ahead and prepare for the next step. For that, we're going to be using some Tamiya Masking Tape 6mm. Now it's really, really important that you allow this blade to completely dry. This next step is going to involve placing some masking tape across the blade, and if you do this wrong and too soon you get impatient, you may regret it later when you pull off the masking tape and the paint peels up. To help mitigate this though, you can take your masking tape like so, and uh, you can place it across your shirt or your jeans and pull it up several times, and it'll get some of the adhesiveness off the back of this tape, which will mitigate the chances that it'll peel off the paint. Once we're confident we've got enough adhesiveness off the back of our tape here, we're going to apply it to our self-healing cutting board because we're going to cut it into smaller strips later and we're using one of these lines as a guide so that we can more easily cut straight lines with this. It's a little bit more difficult than you might think just using a ruler with it. For this next step I'm going to be using an X-Acto blade along with a ruler lined up with our tape on our self-healing cutting mat and we're going to cut this tape into three strips. Now this is going to be way more tape than is necessary for the effect we're going for today but it's a little bit easier to demonstrate when we have a, a bigger strip for me to cut and showcase on camera than what you might actually need to achieve the effects. That being said, if you are using a blade or a hobby knife, make sure you're very careful. It's better to screw up some tape than to uh, take off a couple of fingers. Kind of hard to paint and model if you're missing fingers. With our miniature completely dry here, we are now ready to begin applying the masking for our hazard stripes. Now it's really important to remember that this needs to be fully dry. I cannot express that enough. Now I'm just cutting the ends of the tape here so the edges are crisp for the masking process. So we're going to pull up a strip of tape here and this is what we're going to use to create our hazard stripes on our miniature. So with our masking tape ready, we want to figure out the direction we want the hazard stripes to go. The easiest way to do this is to wrap the hazard stripe masking material around the blade and we've cut this down to something that's a little bit small, a little bit more manageable. When applying the masking, you want to make sure you find the side that's going to be the most visible. Get a good angle. You really want to sell this effect. So we're going to start by applying the masking material here as close to where the engine would be on the chain sword as we can get. And this may take a little bit of practice because uh, if you get the angle wrong when you wrap this around the sides of the blade, you may not get a, a tight enough wrap. But in this case, I think we've got a decent angle. We're going to slowly wrap this around the blade here, pressing down. I'm going to come around this side with it. And with that side down, we're continuing to wrap around the other side of the blade pressing down firmly but not too hard and as you can see we're starting to create some really interesting effects we'll wrap that around one more time just to get the uh, the tip of the blade with an extra thing there and there we go we're gonna fold this last flap up and over one more time just to get the uh, maximum amount of hazard stripes that we can get on here and it's important to note that everywhere that this yellow masking tape is is where the yellow is actually gonna be on the model I didn't I honestly didn't do that on purpose but that's what's happened and it's okay to use a little bit of a hobby tool to kind of push the masking tape down into a recess if necessary. Just be really careful. You don't want to cut the masking tape and you also don't want to cut the layers of paint below when you do this. As a final step to the masking here, we're going to trim off a little bit of the flaps that are left so that we can minimize anything that gets caught by the next step, which is going to involve an airbrush. One of our favorite black paints to use here at the shop is Montana. And we're going to be using this to lay down the black on this chain sword now. As always, we're going to test a little bit of paint on the back of our hand first. It's good, uh, good practice to get into. And then we're going to lay down this black across this blade. It's important that you do thin coats here. A, you don't want to pull up any of the masking with the air pressure that's flying across the, the model right now. But you also don't want to have really thick paint. It's also worth noting that uh, you don't have to use the Montana black if you don't want to. You can thin down some black from Citadel to go through your airbrush, use Vallejo black, or if you've got Minotaur Raven black laying around, that'll work just fine too. But we like this because it's very thin, very opaque, and it's a very nice dark black color. And there we go. That took no time at all. We've got our black down on this, and it's important we let this dry before we move on to the next step. With our black color now dry, we're going to be coming in with a gray color. In this case, Minotaur Coal. You can use any kind of gray color you want, but we prefer this because A, it's pre-thinned, and B, it's a nice subtle transition across that black. As always, we're going to spray a little bit on the back of our hand here first, and you'll see some of the fluid comes out translucent first before it starts turning gray. This is some of the remnants of our cleaning solution left. So now as we come to the blade here, we're going to be focusing on the high points with this gray and really making sure we leave some of that black showing. Go real slow and be patient with this. this the transition is going to be worth it. As always, make sure you're applying thin coats, focusing on the high points and the edges here. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to lose that black transition. Uh, but don't worry if you do somehow mess it up. This uh, particular combo of colors is relatively easy to fix. Uh, but in general, if you practice a little bit of patience early on, you'll get really good effects later on. But uh, don't, let, uh, don't let some fear of the unknown deter you from working on painting and practicing your airbrushing. I promise it's a lot easier than it looks. And with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to perfect it and get going. This side's really, really clean, and this side looks like I went a little bit too overboard with the gray, so I have made a mistake. 
I'll show you guys how to fix that by aiming with a little bit of black on this edge here. And as Bob Ross would say, we don't make mistakes. We have happy little accidents. In this case, I'm going to get to show you guys how to correct something if you make a mistake. So my mistake will be a learning lesson for you. To correct this mistake, we're going to come in here with black and aim at this bottom edge and apply a little bit of paint, making sure to leave some gray at the top. It's important to encourage you guys to keep trying to paint and not get too frustrated. Don't get down when you make a mistake. Just try and uh, view it as a learning lesson and a way for you to try and improve. Just for good measure, I'm going to come across the other side of the blade here too and just add a little bit more depth by darkening up the side of the blade as well. Alright, so we've laid down the black here, we've done a gray transition, and I've showed you guys how to correct a mistake in this particular case if you happen to make one. Now the only thing left to do is for that moment of truth when we peel off the tape here and we hope that we don't have any mistakes or errors or any paint coming up. So let's gently pull this and see what we've got. Let's hope that the, uh, the steps and precautions we took early on pay off. It's looking really nice so far. I'm digging the color transition between that brown to that yellow and that black to that gray. And oh, this looks great. And we can see where all that work we put in to get these transitions from dark to light are really paying off. All that pre-shading, all the black we laid down into the gray, we're getting all these nice colors. Now the only thing left for you to do is to paint the teeth on this, maybe work on the handle a little bit, and then maybe consider adding some blood effects, rust effects, or chipping on the side of the blade if you want. Final step would be putting this in the hands of one of your marines so you can bring death to the enemies of the Emperor. Alright, with the paint now dry, I think the hazard stripes on our chainsword are now complete. This piece is not finished for the tabletop, however, so if you guys are following along at home, you still have to come in and paint some extra details. Maybe paint some silver on the teeth of the chainsword and work on the handle, maybe even do some blood effects as well. What have you come up with? If you'd like to share those images with us, check us out on Facebook, maybe consider joining our Facebook group, or tag us over on Instagram if you happen to run a profile. We really would love to hear from you guys though, so make sure you sign off in the comments below. If you have any ideas on what we can do to improve the quality of these videos, what kind of tutorials you'd like to see, what kind of battle reports or tactical videos you'd like to see, this is the place to let us know. We really do like reading these and we love to engage with you guys. If you haven't already, make sure you uh, click the like and subscribe button, ding the little bell here on YouTube so you get alerts when we put up new videos. And if you'd like to support the content we're doing, check us out on deathredesigns.com. Anything you do over there helps keep the lights on, it helps keep me employed so I can continue to provide content for you guys. I'd like to thank all you guys for hanging out with me on this tutorial journey. It's been a blast so far, and I can't wait to continue providing more content for you. On that note, we are going to sign off, though. So as always, happy wargaming, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.